Hey folks, welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. We have an exciting day here on the homestead. We're going to be harvesting some pork today to put in our freezer for the year. Good morning, cat. Can't make a video without the rooster. So we're going to walk you through it. So if you want to learn how to do this, stick around. We have a neighbor up the road that raises hogs, uh, fortunate for us, and so far the last two years he's uh, we've been able to get an animal from him. And getting your animal from the farmer is much, much cheaper than going to the store and buying all your pork, believe me. And it doesn't take a lot of special tools to get this stuff done. So we'll show you today. Um, you can do it with just a little bit of help and you're going to save yourself a whole lot of money. Now, our local farmer here brings our animal over in the trailer, so you don't necessarily have to have a facility to raise an animal. Uh, they'll usually bring it over in a trailer. Now, he just leaves and goes home and uh, says, call me when you're done and I'll come get my trailer. So that's pretty handy, and uh, we really appreciate, appreciate him doing that. So what we do is we dispatch the animal in the trailer, and I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you the kill, but I'm going to show you how to do it. The animal is, has already been dispatched, so we're going to spare you that content. So when you're dispatching an animal, I use a 22 long rifle uh, rifle. That way I can be at a little bit of a distance if I need to be, if the animal's moving around too much in the trailer. You want to get the animal calmed down. You want to get a nice straight shot. Now... The animal has two ears and two eyes, right? So if you were to draw a cross line between the opposite side ear and eye, where that line intersects is right where, where you want to um, place your shot. So right smack in the middle, the animal's ears are up here. So you'd come across both directions. So right in the intersection there is where you want to make your shot. The animal should drop straight to the ground it's going to go into some some reflex kicking and stuff like that, but that's normal. But the animal should not be on its feet. If the animal's on its feet, you haven't done your job correctly. So after the animal is dispatched, while the animal is still kind of moving around, uh, get some help, get the animal out of the trailer, get it to where you can get it hoisted up. We use our tractor here on the homestead. You could use an A-frame, um, a, a board across between a couple post or something like that something tall enough to hoist, hoist the animal up and get that animal hoisted by the back legs and we'll show you how to do that so right behind this joint here there's a tendon that goes down here you want to slice a knife through all the way through the other side on the inside of that tendon get between the tendon and the the bone and the hook will go right through there and that'll hang your animal you want to do it on both sides so once you get that done, get your animal hung up in the air. We have a beautiful hog here that we've got hanging from the tractor already. So the next step is to bleed your animal. And you want to come down here right uh, in, below the shoulders and feel with your hand. You'll feel the breastbone. There's a little the, where the end of it is. And right below the breastbone, you want to shove a knife straight vertical up into the heart area to bleed this animal. And I'll show you the knife that we use. This is the knife that I use. I recommend about an eight inch blade. I bought this blade at our local farm store just for this purpose. So you would go right up just below the breastbone, straight up and drive into the heart area and then kind of twist the knife and then the animal will start to bleed. If it's not bleeding, move it around a little bit and find that, that sweet spot. Now, we did it into a bucket because we didn't want blood all over the ground. So that's a good idea to have like a lick tub or something like that for the blood to go into. Now, if you're making blood sausage like we used to, we would wash the animal real well on their chest right there if we were saving the blood uh, into a food grade bucket. But uh, keep it as clean as you can. Now, once the animal has sufficiently bled out, we like to take a hose and clean the animal up as best we can before we start the skinning process. 
we're going to skin this animal because we don't have a, uh, a tub big enough to scald this animal to shave it and leave the hide on. Now if you don't have a skinning cradle, this is the next best thing. Get you a pallet, a couple 4x4s, lay your animal lengthwise on the pallet, and then prop it up on its back using these 4x4s. There's one on each side. Now to do the skinning, we're going to use my dad's old knife here. It's kind of a short curved blade. It's going to work really well. So my first order of business is I'm going to start down here on these trotters. And then you'll see right above this joint here or this, this area, there's a joint right in here that we're going to carve around here and cut that off. And then we'll start skinning from there. That way we don't have any contamination from the hooves or anything like that. And then we'll start coming down the body just doing the skin. We're not going to gut it right now. And then we'll pe start peeling the skin down this way onto the pallet. And then once we get down about as far as we can go, we'll uh, put this baby back down. We'll pick it back up. By that time, we'll have the hams all exposed and everything. We can uh, grab it with the tractor again, stand it, and uh, finish pulling the hide off the back. And then we will go ahead and eviscerate the animal. All right, we've started peeling. So after we separate our trotters, we come down here with a knife, we hold it blade side up, and we just come down that skin underneath the skin, keep the knife tip just right underneath the skin, pulling up and write it right down. And then we come across and then we peel it back. We peel down the sides of the hams like this. And then this little flap here, we peel all the way back and then as you're skinning, you're keeping one hand underneath the animal right there. And then you're cutting right along the skin. Staying, scraping the skin, don't scrape the meat because you don't want to hack up your hands. And then same with the blade here. Blade, sharp point facing up or the sharp edge of the blade facing up. Let me grab the blade and demonstrate here. So put the tip of your knife underneath the skin and then run it all the way up like that. Make sure you're not digging down inside. It'll ride right underneath the skin, go all the way up to the chin. So now that we've got the hams exposed, we're going to start here and we're going to start peeling this side. So the reason we're peeling it out like this is all the hair, the dirt, and whatever's on the skin stays on the inside and it keeps the carcass clean as you peel it back. So like your right hand is your clean hand, your left hand is your dirty hand that you've got up underneath the hide pulling down and just scraping right along the skin with that blade. Make sure your blade is nice and sharp. All right, we've came up, we've peeled this side, we've connected the leg, we've cut down the leg right here, peeled it back. I'll show you what we got going on the other side. We're pretty much all the way down this ham all the way down to the back, what you do is you pull the 4x4 four four over on that side so the animal rolls that direction. And then we've peeled all the way down, even peel the skull. When you get to the ear, you can cut right through the ear canal and the ear will go with the hide. And then pretty much lined up with the jaw is where I stop. And we peel it all the way down. So now we're going to roll it back this direction and then we'll start working on the other, si the other hide side. All right, we got it peeled basically down to the backbone on this side. So we're going to put the gambrel back in here, lower this thing down, uh, go grab our bucket, and we're going to pick this thing up, finish peeling that hide off, and then we'll get the guts out. All right, we've started peeling it down. We've got it lifted up, cut around the bung, leave it in place, and then the weight of the skin is pretty much just pulling this off. We just have to nick this with the knife. I'll show you. So just the tip of your knife here. See how that's just peeling off? Stay right along the skin. What you're looking for all the way down. You don't want to hack into that, that loin. But we'll continue to pick it up. And then once we get the skin off, we're going to cut around this bung, pulling it one way or the other to get around it. 
we'll tie this off with a piece of butcher twine and then when we go to eviscerate the animal that'll pull through clean and won't leak all over the inside of the meat all right we've got the bung tied off and we've cut all the way around it so we've got our bucket down here below the hog we're going to start right on the bottom of the ribs here we're going to cut down through that breastbone with a knife as far as we can go down into the the neck right there and then we'll start working our way up here start getting those guts pulled out we'll turn our knife backwards slide up underneath the uh, skin there so we're, we're not puncturing any gut and then that stuff will just pull right out we'll be very careful not to uh, uh, carve up our pork skirt steak we'll show you where that's at so we're gonna get after this now once you get your belly cut real, gi real gingerly without cutting the gut work your hand up in there around that bung you can feel it up in there work your fingers around it back and forth break all that tissue loose and then grab a hold of it with both hands and pull it through that's what we've done here this is hanging all the way out now so now we can start pulling on the gut here just barely nicking back by the backbone and then all of this will roll right out and remember like i said when you get down to the skirt steak which is basically the diaphragm which separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity we want to make sure we don't carve up our skirt steak all right we're completely eviscerated you can see our really nice skirt steaks in here see them right there on the sides right there on the bottom of the rib you got our kidneys right here these just pull out by hand you can just grab them and rip them out and then the other thing you want to be careful of is your tenderloins are right here on either side of the rib right up up here underneath the ham right in this section so you don't want to be hacking up your tenderloin in there either stay away from that so we're cleaned out pretty well so we're going to get the hose over here we're going to hose this thing off really nice got her all washed off really nice we're letting her drip just a little bit then we're going to get her in a barn all right we're hanging in the barn and if you'll notice we uh, went with two hooks here on our gantry here uh, we do that because we're going to split this carcass down the middle and once we start processing if we pull one side off the gambrel is going to flip and then the other side will fall off so we're going to pull this gambrel out next thing we're going to do is get our hand saw we have a little hand meat saw we're going to cut through this pelvic bone right here and then we're going to get our sawzall that is fitted with a stainless steel blade we bought this on Amazon. They make them for the Sawzall. And we're going to cut down that backbone. Here's our little hand meat saw we were talking about. Very handy to have. Uh, you can use it to cut the hawks too if you can't find the joints. It's hard to find sometimes. So we're going to use this. We're going to come right up through here and cut right through that pelvic bone. We got a pelvic bone cut so now we've taken our knife and we've cut down in between the hams and we've also scored a line right down the middle of the backbone uh, for our saw to follow and when you do this you want to pay pretty close attention to uh, staying on that center line if you get one way to the left or the right you're going to get into your tenderloins and your your pork chops back here in the back you don't want to tear those up all right we got her cut in half Get her right down the middle. You can see our two halves here. We also cut the head off right above the jawline of the head. We cut it off and we harvested the meat off of the head already. You can see this beautiful skirt steak in here that we were talking about earlier. That's fantastic meat. You don't want to carve that up. But uh, our tenderloins are all good. Didn't hack anything up. So. This meat's probably going to sit till tomorrow. The next day we've been getting down into the teens at night. So it depends on uh, how quickly this cools down. We definitely want to cut it before it freezes. So we've also gone out to our waste bin and we harvested uh, the good organs out of there. The heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and the liver. 
and we're gonna make dog food for our buddy over here, Brandy. She's gonna get some really good dog food out of that. So we gotta drain our hose so it doesn't freeze, and then I'm gonna dig a hole and dump our nasty stuff in it. All right, we got everything cleaned up. Now we're out here in the shop cooking Brandy's food. That's all of the organ meat. We ran it through our big meat grinder. And now we're cooking it. I added about a quarter cup of salt or so. Give her some minerals. But uh, we're just going to cook this until it's nice and brown. And then we'll shut her down. And then she'll have some really good, nice dog food she's going to love. We'll put it in the little individual packages for her. And then we freeze it. And then we pull one out probably a week or so. And she has a nice treat. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this video up with the initial preparation of our hog. We'll come back for additional videos on this process with the, the cutting and, and wrapping. And we'll maybe do some sausage and stuff like that on some couple future videos. Do not be intimidated on doing this stuff, folks. You can save yourself a ton of money. It doesn't have to be perfect if it's for you. Uh, nobody's going to be standing there telling you're doing it wrong. So just follow some simple little steps and just a few basic tools. Eh, there goes Cat again. And you can get this stuff on your own. It's, I've been doing this stuff since I was a little kid. It's how I've learned. So learn by doing. Get in there, get your hands dirty, and do this stuff. So till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Cat says goodbye too. We'll see you on the next video.